Hi, I'm David Plyler with Glen Eagles Group, and this is a video that we produced for the students of Atlanta Youth Academy uh, for a series for them that we call Business 101. We also think this video uh, could be helpful to other students uh, for use either with their teachers or their parents. And what we're going to talk to you today about is uh, how a retail store operates. And we're focusing on a particular store here in Atlanta, as an example, called Wish Atlanta, that's owned by Lauren Amos. And this is a store that's located in Little Five Points uh, in Atlanta and sells clothing uh, and specialty sneakers. Uh, we think this is an exciting store. Uh, we encourage you to go to their website. It's www.wishatl.com. Uh, it's a great store. It's a fun store to be in, uh, and, and today we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to divide this into two sessions. The first part is talking about a normal business cycle for a retail store, and then the second session is going to be just explaining to you uh, how a typical retail store makes money. Now, in this first part, we're going to talk about the business cycle. I'm going to go through the points quickly uh, and then pause and let you ask questions to your teachers or your parents. Then we're going to come back and go through these points a little bit more. Uh, and then after that, pause again to see if you've got any other questions. And then finally, uh, we'll conclude with a session that talks about how uh, a business like Wish makes money. So let's start with the business cycle. Uh, this is what we consider to be the full uh, cycle of things that a business a retail store has to do in their normal business operation. The first one is to decide what do the customers want. Probably the most critical thing because if you get this wrong, you're probably not going to be, uh, you probably won't do well as a business. Very important to decide what your customers want. Once you've made that decision, you go out and buy the products, assuming you're not producing those products yourself. Uh, once you've bought those products, you have them shipped to the store and those are held in what we call inventory, which is just the total uh, products that you have in the store, and they're held in two places. One is the display inventory, which is what you see when you normally go in a store. And then there's a storage inventory that's behind the walls, uh, for instance, with shoes that, that has all the multiple sizes uh, that a customer may need because there's only one shoe size to play in display inventory. Once you've got that set up and the store looks right, uh, then you let your customers in and you sell the products to the customer. Now, uh, in today's market, you sell this in two ways. You sell it in the store, the physical store location, or you sell it over the internet, which is called uh, the web store. And in both of these situations, at the beginning of the season, you always sell your product at full price. Uh, then, later in the season, when the, uh, you uh, are getting to the, to the end of the season and you've got some products left over, you'll probably have to discount these to sell them, sometimes as much as 50 to 60 percent. But even after this discounting process, you're inevitably going to have some products left over, and this is the last thing you do, which is to get rid of the products not sold. Once you've done that, then you're all the way back up here beginning the business cycle again and deciding what the customers want for the next season. So this is why we call it a cycle because this is just done every season of the year and is based on changing customer needs. So with that, I'm going to stop, pause, let you uh, talk to your teachers or your uh, parents and see if they have any specific questions. Then we'll come back and talk about this in a little more depth. Okay, let's go through this business cycle in just a little bit, uh, a little more depth uh, and, and give you a couple additional points. This first one about what do customers want. This is a tricky thing uh, for a business. There are many ways that you can decide what your customers want. You can buy research materials, uh, you can go to trade shows, uh, you can decide yourself what you think are trends in your market. But as I said in the first part of the session, this is the single most important thing. You've got to get this right 
if you're going to have a successful business. And people, uh, really successful stores, have a knack for figuring out what their customer wants. Okay, then you've got to go buy the products. And typically this is done by going to the factories where these things are produced, but uh, generally uh, it's more often done going to a trade show in a specific place like New York City or Las Vegas or things like that where you can see a lot of different people that are producing products and the products they have to sell. Uh, as I said earlier, then you have to bring it to the store and uh, the display inventory here is the most critical thing. How you display the inventory in a store is critical to whether uh, customers that come in find it attractive to buy. So this is always a challenge for the owner is to display the inventory in an attractive way that it seems appealing uh, to the customer. Uh, uh, selling products to the customer, uh, the most important thing in this process is the salesperson, at least with the, uh, when you're selling in the store. Uh, the ability for that salesperson to interact with the customer and understand what the customer is looking for and help them find just the right thing uh, is really critical. So you want salespeople in the store that are very talented at helping customers not only figure out what they want, but get them to make a decision to buy the product. Now, uh, selling over the internet is a little bit different, although it's the same theory. You're trying to, here there's not a, uh, a salesperson involved. You are dealing directly uh, with the customer over the internet where they're clicking through and uh, looking at your different products. So how you display that in the web store is really very critical. Uh, we, we talked earlier that when you're selling these products during the season, you're either going to have uh, sell these at full price uh, and then just use the example of Christmas. Uh, you would probably sell them as full, at full price until maybe a week before Christmas. Then you have a feeling for how many uh, pieces of inventory you've got left over. And at that point, you'll go in and have some preliminary discounts. Then after Christmas, you would typically come in and discount this, uh, as, as I said earlier, it could be up to 50 or 60 percent. And at this point, you're just trying to sell the inventory and get it out of the store. Inevitably, though, you, you're going to have some inventory left over. And that's the last part, and uh, the ways uh, stores do that will vary. Some will just give it away. Uh, uh, there, there's several different things. So, anyway, as I said earlier, once you're at this point, you're back here. Now, I will say that, that the decision on what the customers want is not being made exactly at the end of this cycle because uh, you're probably buying a season ahead, and so this is just a constant process that you're going through. But at this point, let me stop and let you talk to your parents or your teachers and see if this makes sense about how a business operates. Okay, uh, let's go through this last part which is telling you how a retail store uh, makes uh, money. Uh, it, the, the obvious part of this is to make any money, you have to have your customer buy your product. So the first thing that you do is you have what we call sales. And this is just the total dollars that you bring in from selling your products. Now let's use, in the case of Wish, an example of a sneaker. Uh, they may sell that sneaker for, let's say, $120. Uh, now, I said earlier that that product, they actually had to purchase uh, from a manufacturer or other vendor. So they actually have a cost involved before they sell it to you. And let's say that, that, that we sold that sneaker for $120, then you have something called cost of goods sold. And let's assume here 
that the uh, uh, the product cost fifty dollars when they pay uh, the manufacturer to make that product for them. So at this point, you sold the sneaker for one hundred twenty dollars. It cost you fifty dollars uh, to purchase it. You've got seventy dollars left over. And that's what we call gross profit. Now this is important uh, because this $70 multiplied by all the individual sales that you make is what the company has to have or the store to pay for all of their other expenses. And so here I'm just going to give you some examples of other expenses, the two biggest expenses that a store has after that $70 is uh, uh, paying the people. As I said earlier, you've got to pay salesmen, you've got to pay people that handle the uh, uh, storage inventory, and let's say that, uh, that those expenses are uh, uh, $35. These brackets mean these are negatives. So $35 for paying the people. And then another significant thing for a store like this is they have to secure space either in a mall or a standalone store. In the case of Wish, they have a standalone store in Little Five Points. And let's say that that rent cost uh, uh, $15. And then we just got other expenses of $5. So if this is the way this particular uh, store operated, that would be total other expenses of $55, which subtracted from here leaves what we call profit of $15. $15 on a a product that sold for $120. A lot of times it amazes people uh, how much it costs to run a store, but this is the way it breaks down. You have to pay for the product, this produces gross profit, and then you have net profit, which is after all your other expenses have been paid. If you're successful in running that store, you are going to sell as many of your products as possible at the, at the full price and uh, you're going to be able to control these other expenses down here and try to minimize these expenses and still serve your customers well. So I hope with that that we've given you an idea about how a retail store uh, operates and how they make money. I thank you for listening today and look forward to talking to you on another session.